Hey guys, had a lot of questions lately, uh, a lot of emails asking about uh, the difference between a control shear line and an operating shear line. Seems to be con some confusion about that. And uh, let's use this best lock as an example. It's one of the few that I have when I have both keys for it. Now whenever you look at a lock and you can see that the core probably comes out in some way, uh, that's because it does. And there are two shear lines in this lock. One of the shear lines allows us to remove the core and replace it with another one. So let's say our keys are comp compromised, somebody loses their keys. We don't want to leave our office susceptible to thieves that find those keys. So very quickly we can go through and take our control key. And your control keys usually are marked with a C for core or control. So if I'm the maintenance guy, I can very quickly come through the whole office complex, remove the old cores, which have the compromised key, and then take a brand new core, stick it in there, and lock it in place. So how does that work? Well, if you take a look at the lock uh, with the control key, you'll see a little pawl, a locking pawl. So when I put the core in and I lock it and remove my key, if I can get this thing to come out, you can see that that little bar, that locking pawl on the side of the lock, now holds it solidly inside of the core. So let's do that. Now we got a brand new key in there. The core definitely is not going to be falling out. So now we've changed the lock. Now the operating key is quite different. The operating key does not remove the core. It simply operates the lock normally. That's the lock we give to the office workers or the guys who are authorized to, to open those locks. Now, when we compare the keys, you'll notice that they're... Well, let's compare these. These are, these are lined up properly. This is a six-pin lock. This is a Corbin Ruswin lock. And if I can get it to cooperate, you'll see there's six pins, and none of those pins align with each other. There are no common pins between either of these two keys, yet both of these keys work in this Corbin Ruswin lock. It's been ground off probably for security purposes, but both of these keys will operate it. One, the one marked with the C, there you go, will operate the locking pawl, but it will not open the lock. It simply allows us to remove this core. Well, if we can get the core out as lock pickers, if we can get this core out, we can take a screwdriver and open the door. So we really don't care if we open, open this thing to the, up, to the control shear line or to the operating shear line. Either way, we get this lock open and we get that door open. Now here's the problem for pickers. Six pins and they all have to be perfect. We cannot mix and match the shear lines. In other words, I can't take, I can't pick three of the pins for the control shear and three of the pins for the operating shear and get this lock open. It just doesn't work that way. If I'm going to pick it to control, I have to pick all six pins to those exact depths. If I'm going to pick the operating, I've got to pick all six pins to those exact depths. If I mix and match, if I pick all five, so let's say I pick five pins to the operating shear, and I accidentally pick one of the pins on this to the control shear, the lock will not open either to secure, uh, either to uh, operating shear line or to control shear line. So you can see this becomes a game of statistics. So what's the best way for us to get into these locks? Well, let me show you. We got a new tool to play with, and uh, and I'll show you a good way to get into these multi shear line locks very quickly by playing the game of statistics. So let me get this thing tied down in the vise, and uh, we'll get to it. All right, I think I got this tied down without pinching the control. I'm gonna wrap a piece of leather around it to try to not crush it, uh, so that I'll still be able to turn the core. So in this case, we have the operating key, and the operating key. You can see it still works very freely. I didn't tighten it too much in the vise. And then the control key, we can turn it only that far because it doesn't open the lock. It simply removes the core. So that's both of them working. So how do we get into this thing? Well, if we start picking, SPPing, uh, we're going to be here a while because we're going to hit those random shear lines. We're going to pick five to one shear line and one to the other. We're never going to get in. So as I said, it's a game of statistics. Well, we got to play statistics. And the best way to play statistics is with a random attack tool. So we have a new tool. This is the new Peterson 18,000 Bogota. Very flexible. And in this very paracentric keyway, <laughs> we're lucky to have this new tool because it, it now can go around that corner. The thicker models of this could not. So now what we're going to do, we're going to be able to put it in and go around that corner and there's enough flexibility to get at those pins. So let's try top of the keyway. Put a little tension. Now, when I attack this lock, I'm putting it all the way in, a little bit of attention. Uh, now, 
if I simply rake in and out, in and out, like we all do, when you're attacking a shear line that looks like this, you're probably not going to have too much luck with that standard in and out, in and out. What we're going to do is something just a little bit different because this new tool now allows us to get around there, get around that turn, the paracentric keyway, and then we're going to rock up and down, up and down, just like this. We're not going to rake in and out, in and out, up and down. And what we're doing is it allows the high points on this new pick to get up there and pick those deep cut uh, pins and not overset the shallow ones. Now, are you going to break more picks doing it like this? Yes. There's more stress on the metal, so naturally, we're going to break it. But you're going to get into a lot more locks. All right, so up and down, and if you just do it two or three times, and if you don't get open to one of the shear lines, reset it, and then we're going to stick it in there and try it again. As I said, it's a random attack. A lot of luck is involved in this. Sometimes you get it on the first or second attempt. Other times, it might take you 20 tries. And of course, this will probably one of the time. It takes 20 tries. All right, so we're not having luck. Reset and just start reattacking. Okay, reset, reattack. Yeah, last pin is holding me up. I'm just kind of bound up back there. Reset, reattack. Yeah, the, the core is turning. That tells me I'm hitting some of the shear line correctly. But then I'm probably setting uh, a pin or two from the other shear line, which is not going to give us any, any luck at all. Reset. We're going to do it one more time. There we go, got it stuck back there again. And there we go. Uh, looks like we got to the control shear. It turned only slightly and stopped. And that's what we'd expect from a control shear line. Let's take it out and take a look and see if that's true. And if you look closely, the locking pawl for the control shear line has been retracted. We can take this core out and we can use a screwdriver to get the, the door open. I've just pushed it back. You can see it was picked. So it's possible, fellas, even with incredibly wild bidding on locks like this, with a random attack against these multi shear line locks, that's the fastest and most sure way to get into them. Anyway, you got a couple new tools to play with, a couple new techniques to put in your black bag of tricks. Everybody, thanks for your time. Uh, Jeff Moss, thank you, sir, for this lock. Everybody stay safe. Stay legal.